Hi. Hi everyone. This is Dana. I'm actually taping this segment on June 3rd, Saturday. We've had a yard sale this morning. I got a little sun. Anyway, didn't know that was going on. Um, but it was a great day. It was um, my son and my uh, effort of decluttering our attic and our closets and just trying to help other people maybe get to use some of the things we were no longer using. And had a great day, had a beautiful day, and got to meet a lot of interesting people. So it was a good day. But most important for me is that after all of that, and after having a great shower and dinner with my family, I settled in to stitch. And I was stitching on a secret project. And that's why I'm telling you what day it actually is, because you won't be seeing this until December, more than likely, or January at the latest. But I can't share it on my channel until I've gifted what I finished today, because it's a present from my sister Stephanie. You may recall that uh, I went to Las Vegas this year, and my sister Stephanie and I visited Stitcher's Paradise while we were there in Las Vegas. And while we were in Stitcher's Paradise, I saw this pattern finished up as a model in the store, and my sister saw it and just fell in love with it. I think if you've been watching my channel for a while, you might know that my sister had a beloved dachshund named Marley that I did a picture for, uh, a trilogy pattern, I think, um, and he passed away, and it just, uh, it was horrible, just devastating. He was like her child, so it was a very difficult time. But this pattern was so precious. It had two dachshunds in it. It's called Winter Wienerland. <laughs> it's a Plum Street pattern. And it's by the designer um, Paulette Stewart. And I'll show it to you now. It's, you've seen it, I'm sure. It's been very popular. She's got a summer version. Um, beans and weenies, I think. And... I think there's a Halloween version as well. But this was the only pattern of her Dachshund series that Stitcher's Paradise had at the moment, and it was the last one they had. So after my sister saw it, she pitched a fit because one of the Dachshunds, this darker one here, if you can see it well enough, it's with a hand-dyed variegated thread. And the variegation makes it appear as if the dog is dappled. And that was what Marley was. He was a dappled dachshund. So this looks just like him. And that was what really caught my sister's eye. Because you don't see too many pictures of dachshunds that are dappled. They're very rare. And so, anyway, I knew I had to do this for her because of the reaction she had to this picture. But how was I going to buy it with her there? So as luck would have it, <laughs> I had recently, before that trip, celebrated my thousandth uh, subscriber. And I'd had a drawing, and the, subscrib the subscriber who won, um, I had asked for wish list items because I wanted to send her something that she wanted. You know, something that was on her list. And she gave me a list of several patterns that she was longing to get and I purchased a couple of those patterns for her and one of them was the um, one of the f patterns of these little dachshunds and that's how I became familiar with them in the first place. So I had a quick moment there in the Stitcher's Paradise when my sister fell in love with this pattern and I knew I wanted to get it. I just said I was thinking of getting this pattern for um, my subscriber, my winner and of my video uh, contest. And she said, oh, I, you have to, you have to get her this one. And so I picked it up and then I said, well, now I need fabric. I need fabric to go with this. And my sister Stephanie said, are you going to stitch it for her? And I said, oh, no, this is for her to enjoy. You know, I just played right along. Lied. Oh, I just lied terribly. I don't usually do that, but, you know, it's for a good cause. 
anyway, took my sister to the fabric room. We looked at two different fabrics for this piece. And then we got all the Gentle Arts floss and put them on the piece to look at. Because since it was for my sister, I was going to do it in the Gentle Arts hand dyed variegated threads. Because I had to make Marley look like Marley. And so we, I teased uh, my, my sister Stephanie after that. I said, well, you've been to your first floss toss. Because she had. <laughs> we picked the fabric based on how well those threads looked. And we, we must have moved the, the threads back and forth several times to get to make sure it was what we wanted. And we picked this beautiful fabric here. It's a 32 count Swigert. It's Autumn Fields. It's Lugana. And I just love it. I'm going to share it with you. Such a pretty neutral. It has just a very, very slight modeling to it. And I hope you can see that. I can't see what you see, so I'll grab it in the camera range there. So pretty. So pretty. I love this. It was just so fun to stitch. And I have to show you Marley. He's such a doll. Look at him. So sweet. Looks just like him. Now, I want to also give a huge shout out to Yvonne, the Night Owl Stitcher, because I, I was watching her video while I was stitching this, and I had just done the house when I started watching her video, and you see that door in the home there? It's the same thread as this, the dog, but see how striped it looks because I stitched across and back, across and back, across and back, like you do. And I'm listening to Yvonne, and she's showing this beautiful, beautiful piece that she had done with variegated thread. And it was the prettiest brick house. And all the colors were just mottled, just all mixed up, never a stripe anywhere on it. And she talked about learning that in a class, that you didn't stitch straight across and back, you'll get stripes. Instead, you stitch all around. So you may stitch a few over and then up and then back again. I decided to stitch sort of diagonally. So I would start at the bottom I would stitch a few stitches, maybe go one, two, or three, and then I would start filling in, boom, boom, boom. And then I would come over here and do the same thing. So I wound up stitching in little circles or little sections, almost like um, our friend uh, that does the diagonal stitching. <laughs> um, so anyway, uh, it, it turned out so pretty. I just love it. And so the dappling is showing up in little, you know, clumps, which is where what, what the dog looks like. So I was so pleased with that. So Yvonne, thank you so much for teaching us what you had learned. Um, and it really made a huge, huge difference to me. So I'll be doing that again anytime I have a large spot or a large um, area to cover with a variegated thread, I now know not to stitch straight across and straight back. I did that in my Four Freedoms and my heel in that piece, you may have noticed it everyone, it is striped. It, I teasingly said it looks like someone has cut the grass and you know sometimes when you cut the grass you see the stripes in it, that's what it looks like. It is so striped. Anyway, now I know how to not do that in the future. So, um, thank you, Yvonne, for sharing that. I appreciate it. But anyway, I had to share my, my finish with you, uh, and I couldn't do it live on my channel, so I, I apologize that this is such a uh, time delay, but I'm not gifting this to her till Christmas. So, I did put pictures of it on um, Facebook groups that I'm in, um, so you've probably seen it. Uh, back when I actually finished it in, on June 3rd, uh, and I will um, try to get a picture of the final finished, the fully finished object when I decide whether I'm going to make a pillow or frame it or just how I'm going to finish it, and I'll try to insert that um, 
because I should have it by the time I put this in my video. And uh, that way I can you can see how it looks uh, at the end as well. Well, thank you so much for watching uh, a, a video that's time delayed. <laughs> How interesting is that? Here I am sitting here sunburned you know, in June, and you're going to be seeing it probably in uh, in December. But uh, I hope you've had uh, a great time uh, stitching uh, this week, and um, you know that that you have a, a fun, wonderful plans that you're putting together for the coming year. So until we get a chance to visit again, um, happy stitching, everyone. Bye. Hi everyone, this is Dina, and today is Friday, the 28th of July, and I have a finish. I wanted to share it with you. You'll be seeing this a lot later than July 28th, <laughs> because this is one of my secret stitches. This is a gift for my sister Stephanie, but I wanted to go ahead and film the finish before I pack it away to pack uh, up for her Christmas present. So this is the second in a series that I'm working on, there you go, uh, of the uh, little dachshund pieces. So this is called Jeans and Weenies. It's a Plum Street Sampler uh, pattern, and it is just precious. And I had started this uh, as a stitch along with uh, Diane Estes, and uh, hi Diane if you're watching. And we did this together, and I think we may be um, going to start the Thanksgiving one called Turkey Sausage as well. So this is the finish that I just took off the Q-snap a few seconds ago. This is my jeans and weenies. So cute. <laughs> just so cute. I love even the fact that the blue jeans have a back stitched pocket and zipper flap. <laughs> Who would have thought? <laughs> just precious, just so, so cute. Got the little flag in there and the American Eagle. I'm just, uh, it may be a little while before you see this video. So I, I hope you've been stitching well. <laughs> hope you've had a good year and uh, just wanted to share my finish with you. So happy stitching, everyone. Bye. Good evening, everyone. This is Dina, and I am coming to you very late on a Tuesday night. This is August 29th, and I am recording a finish that you will not see for many months. It is a secret stitch. It is a gift for my sister, Stephanie. And, um... I wanted to share it with you while everything was fresh, so I'm capturing this video for, for uh, later use. <laughs> so this is the uh, pattern that I have been stitching on. It's called Halloweenies. It is a Plum Street sampler, and it is by Paulette Stewart. And it is the third in a series of four that I'm stitching for my secret stitch. I have already completed Winter Winterland jeans and weenies and now I've completed Halloweenies and I have one more left to do and the name of it is turkey sausage and it's a Thanksgiving one I can't wait the dogs actually have on pilgrim outfits precious anyway so I have a few things to tell you about this piece I finished it tonight just a few minutes ago and um it provided a few challenges. It doesn't look difficult, doesn't look hard, and it wasn't. It, the challenges were not from the pattern. The first challenge I had is that the color that's used for this vine through here, I had used the color Wilderness for that same vine in one of my other pieces, and I wanted to continue that and not use the color that was here because I didn't have it. And I had Wilderness, and I wanted to go ahead and use up my threads. I'm doing Stitch from Stash. So that was part of my motivation. I had ordered two skeins of Wilderness, one with my first piece that I did, and then I ordered a second one so I could just use that color for all of them to help unite the pieces. When I got the skein in, the second one in, it was a totally different color, totally different. 
this color here on my piece is a beautiful goldenish um, kind of a, a, a brassy gold not shiny but a, a interesting fall color the new skein that I got in is a green it's green it's not gold at all so I can understand why wilderness would look green but the first one I got wasn't and that's the one I've been using so I went ahead and continued using my old skein of wilderness so that it would look the same and I got all the way down to this little tiny piece right here and that I ran out of thread a few stitches and I ran out of thread so I had to go through my DMC and find the match for it and um, I did <laughs> and I went ahead and I finished that piece. I was determined to get it done tonight. But I had another problem. I stitched this part of the time at a stitching meetup. And as it's easier to make mistakes when you're talking and visiting, I made one. Biggie. This S right here, I started the word here on this end because I had finished this end and I wanted to work my way back this way and finish the motifs over here because I'd already done this row all the way across. So I had finished the flowers this way, finished here, and I was just going to work my way S all the way back over. Well this little S is over this little peak. I accidentally started my S over the peak, but I started it over this peak. <sighs> Wrong peak by at least two letters. So that moved this whole thing over from here to here. So now the H is about right here, leaving all this open, needing to be filled in, or I was gonna have to frog all of it. It was done in 310. I did not wanna frog on this lighter fabric and leave the little remnants of the 310, the fuzz, you know, that'll stay there and you have to really work to get it out. So I decided that I would make it my own and I would simply fix it. So that's what I did. I thought about it. How do you fix this? I thought about taking one of the motifs that I had the pattern for, one of these big flowers, and continuing the bond up here and putting a flower, you know, here like it's growing up and around. But these patterns are laid out identically. There are two dogs with fire hydrant, there are flowers with the vines, and then there's a title. All four of them are laid out that way. So to take a recognizable motif on one of them and pop it up to the top, to me, would just look a little odd. I didn't think taking one of the established motifs in the piece was the right way to go. So I thought, well, it's Halloween. What is you know, what, what goes with Halloween? Cats, skeletons, witches, bats. This is at the top. It should be something that you would know, you would expect to see high up. So I looked in my stash and I found this. This is just cross stitch. It is the October 2016 issue of just cross stitch. And in this magazine is a pattern for bats. They're on a towel. And I'm going to find it for you. Here it is. And you notice they're different sizes and they're in different directions. And they've got the little wind uh, to show that they're flying around. And so I thought, I'm going to use this as my inspiration. And I decided I would just start with a bat and add until I felt I had enough. And then I would put the wind in. So here's my finish. Complete with bats. I think it turned out very well. I'm very happy with it. I think the bats look great. I love the colors. I think it looks very balanced. So I'll tell you a couple of things. Number one, I didn't do this in a vacuum. We have such a wonderful community, and I happened to be talking with Yvonne, the night owl stitcher, 
and with Lori, Mischievous Stitches. And I was telling them about my problem and I had showed them this pattern. We were talking together online and I said, my idea is to put bats over here and I showed them the bats. So we started talking about what would work, what would fit. And Lori said, make sure that you're gonna use the same color that you are using in the words to help make it look solid across there. And then Lori also suggested, not Lori, uh, Yvonne suggested that we, I put the wind not only in the bats, but have it going over into the word Halloween so that it would tie it together uh, a little bit more, which I did, and I think that was the right idea. And I chose to bring the gray from the Dapple Dachshund as the wind color because Lori suggested, Yvonne, the Night Owl Stitcher, suggested that I take the gray from the dog and put it as the color for the wind to bring the gray up to the top of the piece. And I think that worked out really, really well. I'm very happy with this finish. It's um, brought me very close to being, um, you know, having a complete gift ready to go. I have one more to do and I'm gonna start it as a sal with a lady from Texas that I met at, at an Indiana cross stitch retreat. Um, and we're going to start the turkey sausage together. So I'll have to reach out to her now and let her know I finished this one and see if she's finished the piece that she wanted to finish uh, so we can get started on the turkey sausage. But for now, that is the uh, third finish out of four that I'm doing for my secret stitch uh, for my sister Stephanie. And I just wanted to share it with you while all the details were fresh in my mind. So. I hope you're having a great time stitching, and I thank you for following this process with me. Good night. Good morning, everyone. Here is my FFO for my sister's Christmas present, or at least it's in progress. This piece, Winter Wingerland, is the one I'm gonna wrap fully finished. And I'm gonna show you how I made this in case you're interested. The other pieces for this are going to be my jeans and weenies that you've seen before. My Halloweenies. And my most recent finish, turkey sausage. My intention is to finish them just like I did Winter Wienerland on this um, foam core board. I've pinned it and I've laced it and then I've put it inside this picture frame and I want to tell you that is the key. This frame came from Hobby Lobby. It was $40, but I got a 50% off coupon, so I got it for 20. Now, this frame, sorry, I'm moving. This frame has a double pane of glass that you put your piece in between that holds it in place. The back of it is like a burlap covered board that came in the frame. This was a picture frame and it had three pictures here, here, and here. And they were just taped on and then put between the glass to show you what to do, how to put your pictures in. Fortunately, putting this piece on foam core has made it just thick enough that it sits between the glass beautifully. And I've even shaken it and turned it and twisted it trying to see if it will slide or move. 
and so far it hasn't. So I'm very excited about that. So what I thought I would do is um, just show you uh, the back real quick. Bear with me if I move a little bit. I'm holding this in my hand. Okay. The back of this frame has the slots in it to go over the mounts on the wall. You can um, hang it this way that I've got it sideways or it has them um, on, on the sides then, or it has it on the uh, top like here and there in case you want to do it lengthwise. But this one is the way I needed mine to go. You'll notice that the back just has these little slides that slip into a groove that's cut in the frame itself. So you just have to, let me find the other one there. That one you can see really well. You just slide it in and out. So to take this out and swap out to the next picture, you would simply move this out of the way on each of these. And there are only four of them. Let me turn this around so you can see something pretty while I talk. There are only four of them. So it's very easy to take the back off when it's time to swap out the piece. So you just take the back off. You take out um, your one piece of uh, mat board and your one piece of glass that is behind the piece. Lift your piece out your glass on this front stays put. You put your new piece in and all I did was take a tape measure and I measured from one side edge, you know, to the picture on this end and this end and top and bottom. And that's how I laid it in there to try to get it as straight and as centered as possible. Uh, it's not absolutely 100% perfect but I think my sister will love it. So I'm gonna uh, pause now and I'm going to take the next piece and I'll cut my foam core. And then uh, as I begin placing it, I'll kind of walk you through the process of what I did in case you want to do something similar. I hope you like the finish. I hope my sister likes her gift. And um, I think it turned out really well. Thanks for, um, watching. Okay, step one in making this piece, and these are some scraps that I have left here, was cutting the foam core. What I did is I measured each piece. I had one sheet of foam core, and I measured my pieces and it turns out that two of the remaining pieces are the same size, seven and a half by 13. So I measured them first and I cut them out. Then I had a long piece left and I measured it. And when I got to the part where I had drawn my lines on my piece, let's say this is one of them, or let's use this scrap here. This was one of them. And I was going to cut a small piece. Let's see. I used my measuring tape and measured out. Let's say I'm going to cut one that is three inches wide. Then I'll measure and mark. And you know, two points make a line. I always try to do three just to be on the safe side. So then I take my trusty uh, straight edge here, in case, this case my measuring tape, Okay, 
then I have a little tool that I had purchased um, years ago from my husband for his shop or for the kitchen drawer and it's a cutter this cuts the hard plastic around things that you buy you know that really thick plastic it has a little screwdriver here and then it has a straight edge and that's the part I'm going to use today so I've got the straight edge here I put this foam core under here the scrap of foam core so that I don't cut through my ironing board cover because <laughs> guess what I did earlier I cut through my ironing board cover so now I have to get a new one but you just put this in and you follow your line when you're done just pop it off So there you go. There's your piece of foam core. Now, once I finished that stage, the next thing I needed to do was to put my pieces on here. And I um, was pinning them first and then lacing them. So I'll kind of show you that uh, as I get to it. But first, I'm going to press my pieces one last time, make sure they're nice and straight. Okay, here is the next step. I took my piece, I started with the Halloweenies, and I wanted to make sure that I got it placed correctly on my foam core. So I picked to measure from the bottom of the picture because if you'll notice, the bottom of the picture goes across on the same row of stitching where the top, it, you know, has a higher and lower placement on the fabric so it would be very difficult to try to measure across there without having like to mark a row um, so I measured from the bottom of the feet um, on both puppy dogs and I measured from the fire hydrant down to make sure that I had the same amount and I had one and a half inches for oh sorry let me turn the tape where you can see it I had one and a half inches on each placement. There's one and a half, one and a half at the edge there, and one and a half there. And it took a couple of tries to get it even across, but that's what it's all about. And I pinned just three pins to hold them in place while I did check the width, and I had to measure from the dog's tails because they are the furthest piece out on both sides. So I measured from this tail to the end was one and a quarter inches and from this dog's tail to the end is one and a quarter inches. Hopefully you can see that uh, well enough. And so now I know that I have it placed evenly from the bottom and evenly from the sides. And so now all I have to do is pin all around to hold it in place, pin and pull just slightly to stretch it. And then when I get to the top, I'll just pull it down to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and pin it, and then I'll come back and show you the next thing I do. Okay, here's my next step. I use stitchery tape the ultimate double-sided tape for Stitchery Mountain. This is acid and solvent free. And what I'm gonna use it for is simply to hold my corners and my folds in place while I lace my piece. It can stay there permanently. I don't have to lift it back up. And so I'm gonna put it here in the corner. It's two-sided tape, so you put it down and then you pull up on one end and the tape stays there and then I take my fabric and this is a little hard to do one-handed but we'll see if we can't get it done and I take my corner pull in my corner taut and I put it down to hold that corner and now I'm going to put tape on each side and fold over my edges and then I will be ready to stitch my 
piece together to lace my back. So I'm going to fold over these two edges now and then I'll show it to you when it's done. So here you have it. Here's the back of the piece. The corners are sort of what I consider mitered. <laughs> and the front of the piece is here. So now it's ready for framing. I hope it'll focus for you. There we go. So that's how I'm preparing the pieces to go in and then I lace the back. Okay, I have this pinned and you'll notice right here in the corner, it looks like you've got a couple of little bumps here where I have folded the fabric over. And I do have. So the way that I fix that is that I press it down with a pin and hold it in place. So I'll put the pin right on the bump that I'm trying to disguise and push it down and it disappears. So I'm going to do that on the second little corner here and I'll be finished. And I think all my corners look nice and neat and I'm ready to lace this one. Okay, here's my lacing uh, completed in one direction. And now I'm going to go the opposite direction. And if you'll notice, I don't know if you can tell from here, but the way that Vana taught us to lace when we were in a class with her at the Fancy Works um, cross stitch retreat last year was to lace from the underside, always come from the underside and pull. Um, your threads um, back down to the underside on the piece below. So now I'll finish lacing in the other direction and I will show you again. Okay, here is Halloweenies mounted and ready to go in the picture frame when it is that season of the year. Let me flip it around and I'll show you my back. This is fully laced now. And I hope I've done um, a good job of it to hold it in place. I've certainly tried. I've pinned it. I've uh, mitered the corners and taped those down. And I've laced the back. So hopefully this little piece will not move or get loose or um, pucker or wrinkle through the years even though it's going to be taken in and out of a picture frame once a year. Um, I know my sister will handle it with tender loving care, so I'm not worried about that. So that's how I have prepared these for the inserts. And when I finish them all, I'll take uh, one more little video and show you them all together. Okay. Just to give you an idea of what the rest of them look like finished, here's jeans and weenies. And I've just laid this on the um, top of the frame just to give the illusion that it's in there. Um, but that's about what it would look like inside the frame. And then if it was time to trade it out, there's your, the one that's really in there for now. <laughs> Here's Happy Halloween with the Halloweenies. That's what that will look like floating in there. I think that will be just precious. I love all of these with the frame. I think the frame color looks good with them. And the last one is a bit longer. Turkey Sausage. It's thinner and a bit longer, but it still fits. You can see it will look nice in the frame. It will fit just as well. So there you go. The interchangeable photos or cross stitch for the uh, little dachshund lover in my life. And I hope you've enjoyed um, my uh, documenting uh, the stitching of it and the finishing of it. So that'll be the end of this um, video as far as the finishing of the um, Plum Street Samplers Weenies <laughs> series. So thanks for uh, hanging in there with me. 
while I did these pieces and finished them up. And um, I hope that it may have inspired you uh, to stitch one of them because they were really, really cute. And um, I want to thank um, Vonna for teaching me how to lace. And I would like to thank Priscilla and Chelsea for uh, starting the ideas of thinking outside the box and doing something different because that inspired me for this finish. So you guys have a happy stitching and I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Hi everyone, this is Dina and today is October the 15th. This is a day after my deadline for you to register for a Pass the Stash opportunity. So today we're going to be drawing the name of the winner for the pattern that has been um, given to us to give away. This is Romeo and Juliet. It's a Teresa Wentzler pattern. It's absolutely beautiful. It's in pristine condition. And we're going to draw here um, on the random number generator and find out who is going to win this opportunity. We had 25 people say they were interested in the Romeo and Juliet pattern. So I've got my random number generator here on the phone. And I'm going to change it from a maximum of 10 to a maximum of 25 from 1 to 25 and we'll hit generate and it shows 22 nice and big so you can see that so number 22 is Tracy Van Alphen Tracy Van Alphen 22 so Tracy congratulations you have won the Romeo and Juliet pattern so I'm gonna put my email address below feel free to email me there or instant message me private message me on uh, YouTube um, and just so that we can get your uh, mailing address uh, to me so I can get that in the mail to you so Congratulations, Tracy Van Alphen. I hope I'm saying that correctly. Um, on winning the pattern, and I want to just give a thank you to Arlene Grimm for donating that pattern. She had originally sent that over to me um, as a gift to me in case I didn't have it, but very quickly um, had even included in her note. If you do have it, feel free to give it away as a pass the stash on your channel. So Arlene. Thank you so much. Uh, you're such a kind, kind lady and so, so delightful. I'm enjoying getting to know you and hope to get to meet you soon someday. Um, we're trying to figure out a way once we get close enough in our travels to meet up together someday. So I hope you all are having a fabulous weekend. It is late Sunday afternoon. So um, I'm going to go ahead and try to put this together on the tail end of a video that I made recently to show you my um, finish of my secret stitch that I've been working on. I've warned my sister not to watch this episode because it's all about her. <laughs> so I hope you enjoy it and then in a couple of weeks I'll have an October update that will be a regular uh, piece. So I uh, hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please let me know. Uh, it's not meant to be a tutorial, it's just meant to show you how I did it and uh, to let you see the finished product of my secret stitch. I've only been able to share these uh, finishes on um, the Facebook groups and then I just decided if I put it all in one video, my sister wouldn't be missing anything else and then after she's gifted this at Christmas, she could go back and watch it if she wanted to. So, hope you've liked it and I uh, hope to see you soon. Happy stitching everyone. Bye.